I think it's about time we pick up where we left off in the last Rodham G Salt video I made, which was a huge success. It seems I hit the nail on the head when I shared those ideas with you, and you also seem to show your share of ideas too. We will of course start from that with this video, but before we go into that, let's just appreciate all of the stuff the deck has managed to pull off ever since then. We got some unique display for some of the event-wide abilities. The dynamic HP color option was separated from GUI and players. They added the Q system. They even changed the opacity of the dot showcasing the player you have locked on your minimap. And of course, they also added the feature to adjust your camera rotation speed. This update post I'm reading off was from when the bot was released. And even before then, we got the server refresh button as soon as I released my first idea video. I'm honestly in favor of these very dynamic patch notes that Decker is pushing out during the beta phase of Rodham G Exalt. There's so many of these ideas actually being implemented, which is why I really want to make this video now. When we are in beta, it's easier for the developers to update their game. So if this or if these ideas manage to get out to some of the right people, I would be so satisfied. And I hope that you will see why with this video. All right, so of course, we're going to talk about the top comment from last video first, an actual trading area. Wow, I can't believe we haven't thought of this until now. Well, I assume there is some Reddit post out there addressing this issue, but to have a separate trading area, I mean, that would offer so many more possibilities. Right now, we just have players standing around in Nexus, which is a huge loss of potential. If you were to add a trading area, you could like give each player a box where they could input their items in some sort of chest, and that chest would then make those items or the offer you're offering appear above the head as like a display so that players could easily walk by and see each of the offers, because that would be way better than that spam chat shit that's going on and people just standing inside a mishmash trying to walk over each other to get their offer out first. Instead of having trading being this chaotic experience, you could maybe add some structure to it. There's so much you could do with this idea and I really hope it goes through somewhere. All right, next comment. Guild updates. Yes, please. Right now, the guild hall is a bit stale. All you would get from a fully maxed G hall is that two seconds of excitement when you enter that secret room. We need to do something different with those guild halls because right now, you don't have any purpose to stay around there unless there's other people in there. Well, that would make sense, but maybe we should give players an actual reason to go in there. Like this guy suggests, we could do it a bit like a Discord server. You know, with the nicknames. And also this second point that he mentioned, an area outside of the guild hall. That would be so great. I mean, the vault in and of itself is interesting enough since it's an outside area too. Imagine this tall gate at the end of the guild hall where you could walk into this garden of paradise. Just like the spa in Nexus, there could be like chill spots and stuff. Make the place all pretty and nice. It would give a whole new feel and vibe to the guild hall. Something we really don't get by those brown walls. And also add some more life. Maybe some sheep, some bats, another NPC like Gil. And sure, this guy also mentions that you could have this shared guild vault chest. It is a pretty good idea, but I think I have something to add. What if you added guild quests? Much like your own personal quest, but just for the guild too. A quest where you could maybe activate it with a specific amount of people that want to enter it. That amount of people would then go and have to search for that item and input it into that guild hall quest thing. If each of the players included managed to get their hands on the item and input it into that quest field, then that would trigger an award. Perhaps a reward that would award each of the players in the guild. The editor standing in right here, uh, how about we do some guild hall boss fights too. There could be a possibility that a quest would also suggest the players to gather a whole loot table of a specific boss. If the whole loot table would be acquired within a specific time frame, it would be possible to summon that boss into an arena in the guild hall. As I mentioned before, you could maybe add an arena to the guild hall. We have seen the admin shenanigans happening in guild halls, so why not just make it a common thing. You could have like this training area where you could summon enemies to test your weapons. Maybe even a show-off stall which would allow players or guild members to fight each other. Alright, I'm talking too much, moving on. Gravestones. This guy is suggesting that we could have some type of unique text you could put under your gravestone if you happen to die. I mean, it's fun, it doesn't really hurt anyone. And he also suggests that a feature could come along that would disable that. Now that we're already talking about the tombstones, this guy suggests that there should be a feature that could adjust the opacity of tombstones. I do see his reason because tombstones actually cover a lot of space if some player dies on top of the enemy. Along with the hypothetical addition of this idea, we could also include opacity changing of teammates, where the player would not only be able to remove players from your screen entirely, but also have the decision to just make them disappear half of that. That way, you would still be able to see where the group is. Well, it's late, I'm tired. See you guys tomorrow. Well, uh, hey, what's up? 
I'm back. So here's a fame bonus idea for an NPE. Functions much like mundane, but just with pets. It's a rather innocent inclusion, so I don't think there would be a huge problem with including this. It gets my green light. Next up, we have stackable marks and stackable potions and uh, stackable stuff. Stacking marks is one of those things that just have to exist because everything else is straight annoying. Inventory management is part of your difficulty playing this game, but in this way it's just plain stupid. How does non-stackable marks challenge you intellectually to a point where you enjoy the game more? Exactly. It doesn't. Disproof! With this last featured comment, let's just address the first point afterwards because that's going into Reddit territory. So, changing characters and being sent straight to the vault when you're in the vault already is a good idea, but why not just make it the player's choice entirely? It's very easy to just add a default spawn location for new characters, unless you press the R key to go to Nexus. In the option menu, you should just be able to choose where you want to spawn when switching characters. I would say the main contenders for that spot would be either the Vault or the Nexus. You could make it with the Pet Yard too if you didn't add the pet following feature I talked about in my last video. Enough of that, let's go into the first point, which is a timer above status affected enemies. This has been heavily discussed on the forums and they have also visually represented their ideas. User Dappertron was the first one to visualize these. Status effect depletion. There was one made for Berserk, Invisibility, and Stasis. Another player from the comments also suggested this graphic for enemies. There's a lot of different ways to go about this. Deck has even added the Stasis depletion effect. All that's left to go is just the rest of them. It's also very unnecessary they added this feature, but I mean, it's welcome anytime. Alright, moving into the second to last idea. A cube guard dungeon. Everything from the boss to the minions in a single picture. It is a cool idea, and I think that the cube has a lot of potential to go with as an enemy. But let's just say, I'm not sure if this is ever gonna happen. But if it did, I'm not sure if anyone would complain. And here's the last idea, which is new ideas for fame bonuses. A fame bonus for popping inks. It might give the players an incentive to do more vine sellers, so I can see this happen. And he also goes into this idea for a tome. I could feature it because, you know what, why not? Let's feature it. He suggests that the tome would only be able to heal 100 HP on ability use. But there is a catch to this item. When your mana bar is full, you have the option to charge your ability. It takes 1.5 seconds to complete, and if you do it without any hindrance, you'll get these following effects. So the heal happens in accordance to how much mana you have on your priest. This could become very powerful already. There's a new divine protection feature neglecting tile damage in a range for 3 seconds. I could see this being useful in a lava walk. And it also combines with the paladin seal, making the healing buff faster in a range for 3 seconds in proportion to user's max mana. It only has a cooldown of 10 seconds and the range is yet to be decided from this player. This seems like a pretty sweet deal in a group situation, but also a very very powerful item. I can already see an issue presenting itself when several players use this ability right after each other. The cooldown suddenly becomes meaningless. Should there be some kind of rule to this? I think it's a good idea, but maybe you should either rework it or just have one to two of those effects in effect. All right, respect paid, ideas featured. What next? Throw the ideas at me in the comment section and make sure to like the comments you agree with. It makes it a tiny bit less time consuming for me to read and also avoids me reading the same idea twice. I must commend you that these ideas are great. They are creative. Some of these ideas, when you read them, you just facepalm to yourself like, how didn't I think of this before? Suddenly, a solution to a problem you never knew you had is found. It's a double-edged sword. But I know that Decker wants the best for this game, so let's just hope that we see some of these in the future. Until then, I'll see you in another video.